Machine learning algorithms are permeating our technology, so it's important to understand how they work and how they affect your well-being. I'm going to show you an experiment I have been running with YouTube's content ID algorithm. I've been deliberately pushing it to see what triggers it and how this thing works. Even if you do not create videos for YouTube, understanding the content ID algorithm will be helpful because it'll help you understand other machine learning algorithms like algorithms that detect plagiarism, that monitor your purchases, or even that identify faces. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power. If you have been paying attention to YouTube for the past year or so, you probably have seen some complaints about copyright issues, specifically about copyrighted music. So I don't know if we can play this music for copyright reasons, so I'm gonna put some other really festive music to link in Dancing with Santa. And on top of that, UMG keeps taking all my revenue. Unless UMG claims it again. Cage was like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The complaints have many sources, but the one that affects every creator on YouTube is the content ID. YouTube's content ID algorithm scans every video uploaded to YouTube to see if it contains copyrighted content. And that's what I want to experiment with today. I'm going to push this thing. So let me explain to you the conditions we need to test the content ID algorithm. First, we need a basic understanding of how the algorithm works. Second, we need some hypotheses about what we can test to see what will push it. Third, we need a base clip or a base condition. Fourth, we need a channel where we can actually go out and experiment with the stuff. And then fifth, we just go and see what the results are. Just like any machine learning algorithm, Content ID can't positively identify anything. What it does is it scans the content and then tries to generate a probability that it contains copyrighted content. In fact, it just scanned the words that I spoke to see if that was something that was copyrighted. That music you're hearing right now, the Content ID algorithm is scanning it and trying to assess a probability that this is copyrighted music. But just like meteorologists try to predict the weather and get it wrong, the algorithm might make wrong predictions about whether this contains copyrighted content. Wrong predictions happen in other algorithms as well. Take the iPhone and the Face ID algorithm. When you hold up this iPhone, it scans your face and it tries to predict whether you are the iPhone's owner. And just like these algorithms that make wrong predictions, it could make an incorrect prediction about who you are. The Corridor crew did a great video on testing the Face ID algorithm. I recommend you check it out to get a further understanding of what we're talking about in this video. Just like their video, we can upload different content to try and test the Content ID algorithm and see what affects its predictions. Content ID can identify copyright violations in lots of different content such as movies or even other YouTube videos, but I'm going to focus on music. And I have two hypotheses about how Content ID works with music. First, I think the length of the content matters, and I think that for two reasons. For one, you need to actually have time to identify the song. Here are a few one second clips from the songs that I tested, and they're really hard to identify. Second, there's a doctrine called fair use doctrine that says you're allowed to use copyrighted material as long as you do it in certain conditions, and sometimes the length is considered one of those conditions. So it could be that if you use a short clip, then YouTube will decide that that's fair use and they won't ding you for a copyright violation. The second hypothesis that I want to test is that the song matters. I think that popular, current, American songs are going to be the ones that trigger the content ID algorithm the most. I think anything that's older or from other countries is going to have a hard time triggering this algorithm. I don't have solid evidence for why this is the case, but I just feel like that's going to be an issue when I go through and test this algorithm. So I got 23 different songs from different decades, different genres, different countries, and I'm going to vary the length of these songs in a clip so that way we can see how the content ID algorithm works. For this to be a true experiment, I need to hold everything constant except for the variables that I want to change to see if they affect the content ID algorithm. So I need a base condition or the base clip. And so I get made a recording of a video that's going to be the same for every video that I upload and the only thing I change is the length of the song that's played in the clip and what the song is. Here is the incredibly embarrassing clip that I posted. This is a test of the YouTube copyright system and you get to see some mediocre dancing as a part of it. Okay, so yeah, my family 
laughed at me a lot when they looked at this video. Um, so that was 10 seconds of music. I'm going to vary that. Sometimes I'm going to play 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, and I'm going to play different songs associated with that clip. But it's going to keep the clip the same and only vary those other factors. Obviously, I cannot perform this experiment on my channel because I'm going to be trying to push the copyright claims and copyright claims can get your channel shut down. So I needed to create another channel and I uploaded all these videos there to see what would happen when Content ID scanned these videos. I didn't make any of these videos public, so I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to go and find them for yourself. But this is actually what YouTube recommends. They want you to upload that video and not make it public so that way the content ID algorithm can scan through it and see if it's clear. So let's start with this base condition where I played all 23 songs for 10 seconds in that video. Under these conditions, Content ID flagged 43% of songs as violating copyright. Keep in mind, I am violating 100% of these songs copyright. It's the same case for all of these, but it only flags it for 43% of them, which already shows us the weaknesses of machine learning algorithms. Sometimes they make bad predictions. But it gets worse. If you're a foreign song, only 30% of those songs were identified by Content ID. And some of the songs we chose were pretty popular songs, so it seems like foreign artists are at a disadvantage. It's similar for older songs. For the songs that were 10 years or older, only 30% of those were flagged by Content ID. If you are a current popular American song, you were three times more likely to be flagged than any other type of song. So how did this work when we varied the length of the song? So we started with 10 seconds and 43% of clips were identified as copyright violations. When we moved it to nine seconds, nothing changed. All of the songs that were flagged were still flagged. None of the ones that weren't flagged all of a sudden came up. When we moved it to eight seconds, half of the songs dropped off. We only had about 21% of songs identified as copyright violations. Then when we got to seven seconds, only one song was seen as a copyright violation at seven seconds. And then at six seconds, not a single song was identified, which might lead us to conclude that YouTube is actually allowing six seconds of copyrighted content on videos without file, without being a conflict. And I am almost certain I read this somewhere that they were going to allow six seconds not be a violation. And I, for the life of me, cannot find out where this source was. But keep in mind, Content ID is not what determines whether I'm violating copyright. It's just a tool that YouTube is using to try and defend people's content and to find the places where it's being violated. But I was violating everybody's content. If we know, if we believe that 10, 10 seconds of a song is violating a song's copyright, I violated everybody's copyright in this experiment, but only 43% of them were identified, 43% were protected, and they were protected in predictable ways. If you're a hot, popular song, that's the case where you're likely to be protected, and if you're a foreigner or if you're an older song, your song might not be protected, and that affects people's economics. That means that those people who own the copyrights to those songs have to invest their own resources to figure out if their copyrights are being violated on YouTube, and that can be a huge economic burden. At Market Power, we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. If you enjoyed this video, you'll like this video I did on Lego copyright violations, or you might like this video I did on machine learning algorithms making predictions. If you're interested in joining a community of people interested in and excited about economics, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Market Power.